Hello, welcome. This is the webinar, the free workshop on Amazon affiliate reviews. So we're going to have a look at some of the best practices out there. If you're in the chat, please say hello. Hopefully we'll have um, a reasonable crew on here today. You never know. Um, sometimes I publicize these a little harder and sometimes I do not. Duke is on. How's it going? And hopefully everyone can hear me. Probably so. All right. Okay, now some people are pouring in. Lance is on as well, so thanks, appreciate it. And there's a lot of slides today, so this is probably going to go a little bit um, over an hour, most likely. And I see, I'm just making sure all my settings are good to go here, and I think they are. All right, excellent. Yeah, feel free to let me know where you're from. Say hello. Um, we have Pete and Tom and Subum as well. Cool. All right. So I just got some fresh coffee and I got some water. So I'm ready to go. And it looks like I'm going to go ahead and get started. I think I'm going to get, I'm just going to get to it. All right. I'm going to share my screen here. And I know. I know that the uh, there's a little bit of a delay, so that's cool. So this is Amazon affiliate reviews that convert. I'm going to go through and show you a lot of different uh, specific examples. So I went and analyzed a lot of different sites, but I'll show you a few um, like key components that a lot of sites have. Now, this is a great starting point, and I'll show you the template that I use. You don't have to stick to it exactly. It's a good starting point, and then you can tweak it as needed. And we have uh, Kelvin Sita, Alex, and Dennis as well. All right. So just curious, how many people are already five-figure niche site students that are in, in the chat here? Just curious. I know we always have a few, like Lance and uh, maybe a couple others. Just curious. Sound check. Everyone can hear me. That is good. And let me know if you've created a site um, and this will help me sort of tailor the presentation. I know I recognize a lot of names just off the bat anyway, but let me know if you've created a niche site before. And I'm Doug Cunnington. I think a lot of people do know me already. Founder of Niche Site Project. I like Border Collies. Th those are uh, a couple a couple pictures there. So Brody, that's my old dog, and we're hanging out at Old Faithful there. And that's my new dog, Georgie. And that was when we were in Colorado. I'm actually heading down to Denver. So by the way, if are people in Denver, if you are, I'm going to be down in the Denver and Boulder area um, in a few weeks. So I probably need to send an email out about it, but I will, uh, <laughs> I'll uh, have to put something together if there are people in town. Okay. Some people, almost everyone has created a site or at least you're getting started with it right now. And Thomas says, you have a couple of young sites, but it's so tedious. Indeed, that is actually the name of the game. <laughs> Everything seems to be pretty tedious. All right. And my past track record for people that don't know me, I've created lots of niche sites. To be honest, most of them kind of went poorly. Uh, a lot of these uh, turned up to be a dud. But I've, I've had a couple that turned out really well. And I'll talk about a couple of those. And I'll also highlight some of the, the lower points. I've coached a lot of other people. I have a course, Five Figure Niche Site. And I've done a lot of guest blogging. And I have a PMP, so Project Manager. Kind of put that framework over everything that I'm trying to work on. And so if you have created a site, feel free to share earnings if you're into that stuff, like how much you're making per month. Or if you're just getting started, I know some people like uh, Thomas and Vo Vajta said, you're just getting started. So just interesting to hear that. And feel like I said, feel free to share in the chat however much you want. So I've been featured um, on a lot of internet marketing blogs and podcasts and other places like that and on Social Triggers by Derek Halpern. So my timeline and journey, it's had a lot of ups and downs. So a lot of people have seen this before and I highlight it every time, but basically you can, you know, highlight the, just the high points and have the highlight reel. Then it looks really interesting, right? It seems like everyone's doing awesome all the time. Everyone's not doing awesome all the time. People make mistakes constantly, and I still make mistakes in my 
you know, my peers and friends that were coming that, that are sort of on the same level. They've been doing this for a few years. They also make mistakes. They're usually just a little bit bigger and hopefully they're not mistakes that we've made before. So that is the key thing. <laughs> like try not to make the same mistakes over and over again. And I need to add some more to the timeline, but um, I guess the, the big highlight here, the big headline is sold a site last year, almost a year ago um, for 235, which was crazy. It was really fun working on the project and it was great to sell it. All right, Q and A is at the end. Uh, I know some people will think of questions as they go. So I encourage you, if you want, you can go ahead and type it in and then just note it as a question. There's a, you have the ability to mark it as a question versus a chat. And it's just a little easier for me to find those questions. And I see uh, Hex from uh, Russia. That's cool. And Duke mentions you have three monetized sites. You're making over 1000 per month in revenue. Fantastic. Very cool. Steve's on and what's up? All right. So Q&A is the, at the end. I encourage everyone. We're going to go through a lot of stuff fast. So I would recommend like getting a pen, get a pad of paper, take some notes, turn your phone uh, to do not disturb like I just did. So you can pay attention. All right. So first, why niche sites? For me, I think that it's a cheap, easy way to get started. Exactly what it says here. And I mean, really, you can start a site by the end of the day today for like under $200. Now, you may have to invest a little bit more money. Like if you're going to outsource um, a few articles, for example, you may have to spend another $100 over the next you know, month or two, but initially pretty easy and cheap to get started. You literally can use a free theme, have it set up within like an hour or two. If you set up WordPress before, which is like a one click installation, but you can get this going um, before I finish the presentation, if you've done it before and you learn the ropes, you basically learn a full suite of skills and you're able to learn SEO. You learn about themes and hosting domains, you learn about content and actually just writing in general and how to manage, um, you know, content. So even if you don't love the full process, like some people hate link building, they just can't stand it and they would rather do anything else than build links. Well, that's fine. You actually can probably do okay if you never build any links. However, um, some people love building links, but they don't like the rest of it. And you can actually create yourself uh, your own freelance business or agency based on any one of those skills, right? You could charge someone to design their website, set it up on WordPress. After you do this a couple of times, it's pretty straightforward. So even if you don't love niche sites in general, you may be able to just pick out the thing that you like. Maybe you discover that you really love writing and then you want to have a, an agency where you help people had content on their sites. Actually, that is a very good business model because it's really, you know, people find it pretty challenging to hire um, other folks to do writing for them. So if you could take that hard part out and make it easier for someone, that's a business right there. Now, the thing is, these uh, are small sites when you first start them and they're pretty cheap to get going, but they can grow into huge you know, revenue sources or assets that you can sell. As I mentioned, I sold a site um, last year for multi, multi six figures, I guess, low six figures. Um, so it is important to have a plan because there's actually so much information out there. So it's important you kind of have an idea, a roadmap of what you're going to do. We're just taking a look at sort of a snapshot today of like the actual review. So it makes the assumption that, you know, you already have an idea of what your niche is, products, and maybe you have a site set up, like this is a little bit further into the process. But even if you haven't started your site or you're just getting started with your site, understanding how to organize the content so that it converts well is really important. So we're gonna look at the perfect Amazon review today. And what do we got on this side? So let's have a look sort of at a, a high level zoom out is what I say here. So this is kind of what it looks like here. All right. I'm going to go over each one of the pieces and then show an example. And 
Um, if you go to my site, nichesiteproject.com, go to the start here section, I believe I, I have this um, image listed and you can send it to a writer if you want. You can say, hey, we want it to look kind of like this and use it as a starting point and you can tweak it as you go. All right. So because we have a whole lot of slides, I'm going to talk fast. All right. So you get into the title. Um, that is the first thing here. And basically, you want to have like something catchy, something keyword rich. And I'll, I'll point out a couple. So you, I've took I've taken samples here from uh, the wire cutter and then from outdoor gear lab here on the right. So as you take a look, I mean, they're pretty much targeting buyers keywords. So best wireless workout headphones or best earbuds, et cetera. And the little extra stuff that they put in there, um, it might be like best Wi-Fi router for most people. So the for most people is just like letting the person know that it applies to most uh, applications out there. So the other thing is uh, you'll notice the Outdoor Gear Lab pulls uh, or puts dates in there. I usually don't do that, but some people, you know, do that. Um, for every single post and you know it's fine now you don't have to make it too complicated um, you just want to let the person know from the title that they're in the right place based on the query that they've used because of course you have an idea of what they're interested in based on the keywords that you're targeting again it makes some assumptions um, that you you understand the keyword research and the kind of traffic you're trying to get and the, you know, the value of organic SEO over say Pinterest traffic. And I just caught myself about to go on to a tangent about Pinterest traffic, but I'll save that for another time for another day. So the intro paragraph in this area, I want to let the reader know they're in the right place. So same kind of deal. And from a copywriting perspective, I mean, you just kind of want to make sure that they read the title and they're like, oh, great, I want to read the first sentence. And then they read the first sentence and yeah, I'm still in the right place. And this is interesting. I want to keep reading on. So my general format is like looking for the best product type for a specific use or user type. If so, you're in the right place, right? That is completely qualifying them for exactly what they're looking for based on the query. And if if, if they got there and that's not what they were trying to find, then, you know, you kind of want them off your page, right? You want to be attracting the right people to your site. Now, now you should probably put that in your own words, right? You don't want to just copy exactly what I'm saying here, but you get the idea. So put in your own words. It's, you know, it's great to have the content in your own voice. Now, in the intro paragraph, I do recommend you put a call to action. So this is a little uh, conversion optimization stuff. I recommend you put a call to action with an affiliate link there in the first three to four sentences, and that'll allow people to get over to Amazon fast, which is what you want them to do. And that's for people that are in a hurry. You know, sometimes, uh, actually I was buying a, I'm going camping coming up here for that Denver trip that I was talking about. And um, I just wanted to upgrade my sleeping pad, right? So I have a, I have a really ultra lightweight sleeping pad, uh, like a backpacking um, type sleeping pad. And I sleep terrible on it because it's so thin and lightweight that I'm basically just like sleeping on the, on the ground. So I wanted to upgrade. Thing is, when you look, there's like a bazillion different um, options out there because there's private labels and all this stuff out there. Um, so... I uh, like Googled it and I wanted a curated list. Basically, I didn't care as long as um, I didn't want to read all the reviews. I don't really care that much, but I just wanted to make sure it was sort of a curated list. So that is a good example. Sometimes people don't really care to read your full review. They just want a shorter list to choose from. Instead of going to Amazon and typing in, you know, best ballpoint pen, I may want to look um, on someone's curated list because if you look at that, on Amazon, you're going to end up with like 40,000 pen options. Okay. Next, this is an example from the wire cutter of, you know, the sort of intro that they have, and you'll see that they put an affiliate link there pretty quick. All right. So that is why I do it. And 
again, I look at like best practices. I went and looked at a lot of different sites, you know, good sites end up putting an affiliate link pretty early to get people the option. Now, I'll leave it at that. Next is an image. So for me, the image does two things. Well, not just for me. For everyone, the image will do two things for you. It'll break up the text and it sort of encourages the readers to scroll down to read the content a little bit more. And once they start scrolling, they tend to keep scrolling down. Again, this is sort of a copywriting idea where it's like, if you get someone to read the first couple sentences and you make it easier for them to read, they're gonna keep reading down. Number two, it shows the person that they're in the right place because they're looking at a product that they're interested in. And hopefully it lines up with what they expect to see. And again, it'll let them know that they're in the right place. Personally, I'd like to use a half width image versus like a large like feature image that takes up all the space up there. The reason why is I want someone to read the copy um, sooner. I want them to you know, see the words uh, right away to let them know they're in the right place and you know, rope them in to start reading. It could be said, you know, uh, using the my own logic that I just mentioned, that if you put a big feature image, they will scroll down to see the words, um, and that'll get them scrolling down. So it's probably a half dozen of one, six of another. But for me, I like the half width image, and I stick to a pretty, um, pretty uh, well, not 100% of the time, but most of the time. So the majority of the time I'm doing half width image and you can see here um, the wire cutter has, you know, sort of a smaller image and they use uh, like a call to action there. This is sort of like their product feature section. I think they may, have, they, they tweak and change things often. There may be a little box around it at this point in time. Um, and quick note, they do have uh, various calls to action. You can see there are affiliate links. Um, on the image, there's an affiliate link on the button and the name of the product, there's also an affiliate link there. So they have a lot of different ways for people to click over and, you know, a half width image. Again, it's kind of what I like and you can see that they are doing that here. Comparison table. Now, a table is probably the best way to illustrate and summarize data in a small area. And if you're reviewing more than one product in your review, by the way, the template allows you to review one product or multiple products. You can just take um, parts out if you don't need them or add more parts in um, for the different products that you're going through. So basically, if you're reviewing more than one product, you probably really should have a table in there. Um, it's almost certain it'll improve your clicks to Amazon. Now, you can uh, you sort of fall into the trap of like making the, the table like too big and too complex and really simplicity is better. So, you know, if you're not 100% sure what to put in there, I suggest you look at some other tables out there. Now, as I mentioned, you can make it too complex. And this is uh, sort of like the best in class. These are like, um, the most complex tables are super thorough and it's probably like a custom, um, you know, uh, CMS that they use. This is Outdoor Gear Lab. So Outdoor Gear Lab and Baby Gear Lab both do a really good job with their tables. And you can see they're, they're only giving you like five options. If you want to look at the full table, you can click on uh, the view now. By the way, can, can any, everyone hear the motorcycle outside? by the way, some of my neighbors are, they're like hobbyists. They have like five or six uh, dirt bikes and every now and then they, they pull them out and they're just, they're extremely loud. So just curious if you could hear that or if the mic is so good that it doesn't matter. Okay. So the thing is, if you need ideas about what to put in the table, you can, you know, go look at the tables here on Outdoor Gear Lab, for example, or just go over to Amazon for a lot of products where there are multiple options, which is almost all of them. Amazon will have comparison tables. So you could kind of get an idea about, you know, various products that are all in the same class and, you know, see what to put in there. So if you don't know what to put in there, just go look at Amazon. They usually have a pretty good idea. All right. Um, next, we'll get into the feature section. So this is one of the 
sections that you could expand a lot. So in the template, I just list two feature section sections because that's sort of like the minimum amount that I would recommend. Um, and basically you can have as many features as you want. So it seems like a stretch to have like a dozen different features mentioned, but when you think about it, if it's something someone is really interested in, or if it's a you know more expensive product, then it's fair to mention. All right. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, an example that may have a lot of features. I'll just make something up. So if it's something cheap, like a ballpoint pen, there's probably not that many features you can mention. There's probably more than we think, but you know, not a ton. If you look at something like a car, well, there's dozens of features. I mean, you can spend um, a lot of time on each one of like the safety features across, you know, the different systems of the car. And then you can get into like more mechanical um, or design aspects and just on and on and on. I mean, you could write tens of thousands of words on the features of different cars and how they compare to other cars. So depending on what it is, you're probably not going to be selling cars, but depending on what it is, you could have five or 10 different features listed for a moderately priced product, um, say in the hundred dollar range. So I don't suggest that you go crazy off the, off the bat and put all that in there, it could be a little overwhelming. So maybe you just start with like three main features um, that seem to be highlighted in the Amazon uh, details page for the product and then add to it over time. Maybe you check out the manufacturer's manual or their website to get a good idea about like what is uh, relevant to add for the features. So, here is a uh, sort of a sample from outdoor gear lab on hiking boots. So here's the opening for the comfort section, comfort being a feature of boots. So there are more than three paragraph paragraphs dealing with the nuances of the comfort for one boot. All right. So I'll repeat that again. There are three paragraphs talking about the comfort of the boot. All right. They're, I mean, they're going deep and if someone's buying, you know, $200 boots, and they're going to be spending a lot of time in the backcountry hiking around and all that stuff. They probably want to make sure it's going to fit them well. And you can, you can go deep on this stuff. They're talking about, um, you know, long days hiking, the kind of terrain they're um, on, the kind of toe protection, uh, which was important for the terrain that they were getting into, and breaking in the shoe. And there are three more paragraphs on it. All right. So keep that in mind. I mean, if, if you think that someone could be interested in it, then you can put it in there. All right. Next is features and specs for each model. So if you're reviewing more than one product in a single view, then you should probably break out each one of the models or product types and describe it in detail. So for example, you may talk about, um, you know, the features and then it, at some point you're like, all right, we're going to talk about this specific hiking boot and then talk about how that hiking boot lines up with the features. You know, what kind of features do, does that boot have? Um, and it specifically, right. Cause before you were just talking about it generally. Um, so in my opinion, this is a great place to add, images for each one of the models. And if you have the ability to, you know, you can, if you actually own the products or something, you could actually, you know, take a picture of them like out, out in the field in the wild. Um, I feel like those authentic images are, I guess they add uh, more credibility to your site. In my opinion, I'd rather see um, just a, an authentic image that's not perfect than the stock image that is on every single other website out there. All right. And in those mini review sections, we'll call it, you can explain the features and benefits and provide the technical specs for each one of the models. This is a great place to potentially put, you know, bullet points for the technical specs. Technical specs are really um, good to have in that sort of format versus uh, like a narrative form. And the wire cutter has two or three different models, usually 
in most of their reviews catering to different types of buyers. So I'll just kind of point that out here. So we're looking at action cameras and they mention uh, GoPro, which is like the best for most people. They have the E 4K action camera, which I actually have one of those. I, I didn't even realize it. And it's an action camera on, on a budget, which it's like half the price of a GoPro, by the way, and it looks awesome. And then next, they have a specific, um, you know, other camera for people where video quality is their highest priority. All right. So they, you know, the person knows that that is the most important thing for them. So that's a great way to kind of look at it. Maybe a budget option, a premium option. And then if there's some kind of special um, application or something, you could talk about that. Next, great section to have is customer reviews or like user impressions. Now you can't copy the reviews from Amazon um, because that's against their terms of service some copyright issues there and basically people want to get authentic reviews that want honest feedback about the product from real owners and honestly before amazon it was a little bit hard to find that stuff and you just had to read the sales copy the little blurbs um in like catalogs or magazines but now we can get like firsthand knowledge and like see people use those products and you can usually but not always you could usually get a pretty good idea based on the reviews and what you can do is just go over to amazon read the reviews there um, i recommend you take a look at you know forums or other places that you can see reviews or real user impressions and then you sort of curate and consolidate that information put in your own words and that's fair game you can't copy the reviews from amazon but you can summarize them and put them in your own words that's fine now one great call to action that you can use is see real user reviews on amazon and then you could link over with the affiliate link over to the Amazon review page. And that is a great way to just get someone over to Amazon with your cookie. So that's a great, great way to do it. All right. And the conclusion section. So this is where you can summarize the overall review. I like to have another call, um, call to action, a CTA at the beginning of the conclusion. A lot of people want to skim the content just in general. It's highly likely the people are going to read like the intro and the conclusion and maybe some bullet points along the way. Some people read the whole thing, but a lot of people do skim. And if they get to the end, it's a great place to remind them, hey, go to Amazon, check this one out. It's my favorite one because of X, Y, and Z. Now, you can't make the conclusion like pretty long with a lot of information or really short and just say, hope you enjoyed the review. Here's my favorite. It's really just up to you and the style you want to use. I generally like to summarize sort of each one of the sections a little bit, kind of like an essay, sort of summarize it at the end, just so if people were skimming it, they get the, you know, the bullet point um, summary at the end. So just don't forget to put a call to action at the end with an affiliate link there. All right, a quick look at that. This is, uh, again, the wire cutter. And you can see they have, you know, sort of a conclusion. They're like, hey, here's what's coming up in the action camera world. And then they give a call to action, as I emphasized a lot there. So pretty important to put the call to action at the end as well. All right. And I see some questions popped up over there. I'll, I'll uh, definitely take a look in a moment. Uh, feel free to ask more questions. I am going to. Let's see what we have here. Oh, I don't think we have uh, much time to look at review, uh, like an actual example, but let me see what we can do here. So I think we, I actually can show you an example. I'm looking at the time here because I talked just fast enough. I had just the right amount of caffeine. So we're going to look at car seat answers. This is sort of a bad reveal, all right? So we'll just do like a quick walkthrough here on this. So this is, um, I, I try not to out anyone's site, um, by the way, 
this is a site that has been like a public case study or something like that. It's been out there. So this is why I talk about it. And it's been out there for a few years. I have no idea um, if it's getting much traffic anymore. At one point, it was getting some traffic. But um, off the bat, the design is simple, and I like it. Now, as I sc scroll down, I see we have a guide to the best and safest convertible car seats of 2018. Solid. Good title. I can, I can work with that. Um, they have an image here. It's not the half width that I talked about, but it's pretty small and it's not like huge and gigantic, um, high quality image. And I know I'm in the right place because I'm looking for car seats, right? Convertible car seats, apparently. And as we scroll down, we will see um, sort of a Q&A format. So as we scroll down, we see a Q&A format, which is fine-ish. Um, however, the big thing that I notice is I'm already almost halfway down and I do not see an affiliate link yet. So that's kind of weird. Um, the formatting is reasonable. I think it could be interesting to see some bullet points in here. Maybe I'm not sure. Like, uh, I'm not actually reading any of this, but it could be interesting to have some bullet points, but the paragraphs in general are not too long. And now we're almost 80% through this article. And now we finally see the first affiliate link right here. That's a really long way. And it turns out people don't get this far down often. So it would be much better to just have the affiliate link at the top and say, have a look at some of the best, um, you know, convertible car seats over on Amazon here, right? It'd be much better to have that up in the, the top. So we have one here and then there are several other links all down here at the very bottom. All right. So not a great way to do it. I would, I would flip this over. I would put these products at the top. I would make this the top section and just moving this, what's the best convertible car seat, move that to the top and then have sort of the other questions at the bottom. That would really make a big difference here, I believe. The other thing is they're mentioning several products here and it's really hard for me to compare these just in general. And they have a comparison chart here, but it's on a different page. Now, I'll just open that up to take a look. But basically you have to read through this narrative to see like what's going on with these different products. Not the best way to do it. Additionally, they are listing technical specs, like it supports up to 45 pounds facing the rear um, and 80 pounds facing forward, 57 inches tall, blah, blah, blah. And, and it says it's narrower than most seats. So you could fit three side by side in most cars. Man, that would be a crazy car ride with three uh, kids in the back, I, th I think. Um, all right. So my thought is if they added a table on this page, that would be great to see like sort of a comparison. And additionally, if they would take the tech technical specs out of a paragraph format and place it into bullet points, it would be easier to read. And it's, it's good to have that sort of rich formatting. Most of the time, if you look at the rich snippet, that's like, result zero in Google these days, you'll find that most of the time it's either a table, an ordered list, or an unordered list, which is like, you know, a numbered list or bullet points. So keep that in mind. Using those um, formatting techniques is a good thing. Tables are a good thing as well. All right. And we'll just take a look at their table here just to see what they put in. And this is precisely what I'm talking about, right? So they, they could give you an idea of the rear facing um, and front facing and the height and the depth and all this stuff, like to give you some idea of what's going on. Now, probably the reason why they didn't do that is because they have a lot of affiliate links, way too many, right? There are a ton of affiliate links. And my guess is they have no indexed this page because there are just too many affiliate links on it, right? They, they, they have a ton. Now they did a good job because there's only one per line. I have seen 
Um, actually, I've audited some folks' um, sites, some people's sites for them, and they may have a table and then they'll have three to four affiliate links for each one of the lines. So that means if you have five products, that means if you have five products, you may have you know 15 or 20 affiliate links in a very small space. Not good. All right, so that is you know kind of this is a bad um, review format. Just they can tweak it and improve it, but just in general, it looks like they've just published like the fastest thing that they can they could do. Now, um, the other one that we could take a look at is the best action camera, which I think there are probably some updates at this point since I pulled those screenshots from earlier. So quickly, um, they have you know big feature image here, which like I said, I prefer the half width versus like the big feature image. Obviously, it's um, it may not matter a ton and it's a nice image to let you know you're in the right place because uh, you know there's two nice GoPros there. So they have affiliate links uh, actually to Walmart here and to Amazon here. Interesting. So the GoPro Hero Black goes to Amazon and the GoPro Hero goes to Walmart. And then they have a new budget pick, which is a GoPro, but I can't tell. Um, I think that's just an anchor link there. Okay, so they do have an affiliate link right away in the first paragraph. And they actually have like two in the first sentence here. So as we scroll down, I'm not gonna spend too much time because we looked at everything, but you can see they have like a small, a small image, a call to action section with a little box around it. Um, you know, they, they must have done some split testing and they think, hey, this little box, this blue box around it is a good thing. Let's do it. And they are pulling the um, price here from AP, from an API. So that is fair game to list the price if it's pulled in real time. You can't just hard code it and list it. That is not a good idea against the terms of service. So just as we scroll down, you'll see that they have just good formatting. There's tons of information. This is a very long post. And you can see they, they're reviewing a few cameras and there's that Yi um, 4K action camera, which I'm super happy with, by the way. So I am not going to dwell on this too much because we're just seeing the same sort of stuff over and over again. And I'm gonna hop over, finish the presentation here, and then we'll get to the question shortly. Um, okay. I do want to talk about five figure niche site enrollment is open right now. It's only open for another 36 hours, something like that. So it's, it's only until the end of day, Friday, July 20th. So if you're watching this later, uh, the course may or may not be available depending on when you're watching it. And it's a start to finish course. It actually has some pretty advanced stuff in the course. As you go through, you'll, you know, you start at the very beginning and I'll actually go through each one of the units quickly here. It was created with proven principles, techniques, and strategies that work. And if you haven't seen the four success story interviews that I published on YouTube on Tuesday, you should have a look. It's a range of like success um, over, you know, short period of time, longer period of time, you know, 12, 14 months. And in general, um, you know, depending on how much time the person was able to work on the site versus um, how long they've been doing internet marketing, it sort of is, is like an indicator of the amount that they're earning. But uh, someone's making a little under 100. Someone is making about 100. They just hit the $100 mark. This is also sort of a testament that Amazon affiliate sites still work and the techniques within the course still work. I get a question probably once um, a day where someone says, hey, I heard um, SEO doesn't work. I heard Amazon sites don't work. I heard you can't make money and so on. You can, all those things may have uh, you know nuggets of truth or some blend of truth to them, but in general, this stuff works. And then the two sort of highlights, $500 per month and then Ram making uh, 1400 per month currently. So pretty cool. This stuff does work. 
and it's not just me doing it. It's students implementing the stuff in the course. And that is um, powerful, I think. It's a little more powerful than me saying I can do it. But to have other people learn from me, that's that's a good thing. All right. So this is a bonus. I have have not done this bonus before. So this is new. And it's only available to people that are watching the webinar. Or if you, know, if you watch the webinar, you've already enrolled in the course, I could hook you up as well. So basically this is for webinar attendees or if you watch the replay that sign up by the end of the day, Thursday, that's today, all right? So you have to get in before the end of the day today. And I'll personally audit and review your site um, when you have your first post up, your first 10 posts, which is part of the model of the course and the format of the course. So once you have those up, I'll go and audit it, take a look at, uh, you know, keyword structure, a lot of the stuff that we went over today, actually, I can go visually look at it and give you uh, basically a punch list to go and fix things, you know, get them up to par or better. And then hopefully that'll help you convert more traffic to buyers. And Stephen, you can get the template from the website. In fact, I'll dig up the link um, before we hop off of here. But Stephen, it, it's available and you can definitely use it and have a look at it. So unit zero, and I'm just going to go through the sort of core pieces of the course. So unit zero is setting the stage. A lot of that is mindset and just getting you ready for what you're about to do. Uh, units one and two go over brainstorming, keyword research, niche selection, competition analysis. And I have a new, newly updated um, competition analysis sheet where I've added like more qualitative and a couple more quantitative factors to help you understand like the actual competition within your niche. This is one of the most important pieces that you can get into. You may be able to find like some keywords that look to be good, but if you don't understand the real competition, you may be, you know, going after a niche that's very competitive. There's usually a way to carve out, you know, your spot and even a very crowded niche, but without doing the competition analysis, you may not have a good understanding on where you need to spend your time looking. Units three and four cover setting up the sites and content. So content, you know, we go over uh, like this sort of format for the Amazon reviews, but I also talk about how to hire people, why you should hire people, even if you're only going to hire like one person and sort of get into the details of, um, you know, publishing content and publishing content at scale. Unit five is applying to the Amazon Associates program. If you're already in, you probably think, hey, that's not a big deal. But if you have not yet applied, um, there's there are some failure points, right? I actually have a few people that were rejected, right? They were rejected before they took the course. And then usually there's a few tweaks you can make and then you could reapply. But it's much better if you can just apply <laughs> and get accepted the first time. We don't want to get rejected. But if you do, then I can help you analyze things. So next, unit six is promotion and outreach. Generally, it's link building, right? So I, I show you how to do link building and how to do it in a white hat way. Unit seven is growing and scaling, figuring out, you know, should you start a new site? Should you add to your existing site? What's the best approach for you? So there's a few things you could look at there. In unit eight, so the first um, eight units that I mentioned, zero through seven, so we start at zero. So the first eight units are in the basic package. The following units, the next five um, units, eight through 12, is that, that's five, right? Yeah, eight through 12, those are in the advanced and premium package. So there's three tiers um, the, of, uh, you know, sort of levels that you can get. So three tiers that you can get. And unit eight through 12, only available for the advanced and premium members. And the difference between advanced and premium, by the way, um, the premium has all the stuff of the advanced. However, um, they also get four one on one coaching sessions. Next is um, gray hat strategies. So I don't recommend gray hat strategies, those are more risky. However, they do work. And I feel that it's not a bad thing to understand how it works. Um, that way, you know, number one, you can stay out of trouble, right? So if someone's like, hey, we're going to sell you a bunch of links, 
you'll know to look at certain things and identify if it's a bad, um, you know, bad situation, if, the, if it's a risky situation, or if you figure out that, hey, you want to test some of this stuff out, you know, uh, private blog networks can work and you want to test it out, maybe not on your primary site. Um, I give you the tools to sort of understand where to start. Next, expert interview. So I interview, um, I think, seven, six or seven um, experts, successful niche site entrepreneurs, and sort of go into the details. I talk to people like Dom Wells. I think a lot of people know Dom. Uh, Kevin Graham, another uh, pretty well-known person. Rob Atkinson. I talk to, um, I forget some of the other folks, Dave Fox, and a few other people who are just under the radar and just happen to do well. Unit 10 is email list building. So again, this advanced. Most people are not going to get into list building for the first year, but it's you know a surely a valuable skill to have. Next, we look at Beyond Amazon, which is um, basically other affiliate um, programs. That's the word I'm looking for. Other affiliate programs. So sometimes you want to branch out and look at some other stuff. Next is unit 12, the six figure exit. I talk about selling my site and the things you wanna think about ahead of time, right? So you can't just um, all of a sudden decide you wanna sell your site and then list it and then have everything go super smoothly if you have not prepared ahead of time. So if you're thinking, hey, I wanna sell my site and I wanna sell it for a lot, you probably should start thinking that about that like six months ahead of time so that you can get things in place before you even approach a broker or start listing it. So that's sort of the overall course. And I think I set up one of those little offer deals on here. So if you are interested, I highly recommend you check it out. And if there are any students, feel free to mention, um, feel free to mention your experience in the chat. So I think you can see this little offer on there. I think you can. So I'm just going to keep looking at the chat here. I know that a few questions were asked. So I'm going to hop over there and answer questions. So, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen somewhere. Boom. Okay. And I think I can still see the chat here. Okay. So I'm going to scroll back. Feel free to ask more questions if you have them. Okay. There was some good discussion here. Duke, thanks for sharing your knowledge there. Um, Stephen, I'll snag the, the link for the template here in just a second. And as I mentioned, I will place that link in there so you can get to it pretty easily. All right. So Steven, there is the link. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the image so you can get to it there. Da, 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 da. Okay, and I'm trying to find the questions in here. Um, so I see Tom says, do I mention my real name on niche sites? No, I don't because I have an internet marketing blog and people would just go out and like copy my sites or do negative SEO. So I don't, and I don't recommend, if you have an internet marketing blog, I don't recommend you do that. Some people like to keep their name private um, for professional reasons. If you have like a day job or something like that, um, you may wanna keep it private. So I've seen that as well. When I, when I didn't have an internet marketing blog, I still didn't use my name because I wanted to keep it, you know, sort of private. I just wanted to keep it private. I wouldn't want, um, like if I was interviewing for a job, I don't want someone to see like, oh, you're spending all this time blogging. You know, some people don't have a good understanding about um, what's going on. Depending on your industry, some people would love it, but 
Okay. And then Tom is asking Duke about what email to use for outreach. And I think Duke answered. Okay. Duke says, do I have any principles or tricks regarding actual sales copy to what their appetite to buy in order to boost the conversion rate? No. Um, my thoughts on that are if you can get them to Amazon, Amazon will be able to convert people better than I will. So my goal is not to get them to like buy. I don't think, you know, a lot of times I may not have the product and at the scale that I was publishing a lot of content I actually didn't even like proofread any of any of the content. To be honest with you, I had an editor do it and she wasn't necessarily a copywriter from a sales perspective. So my primary goal is just to get someone to Amazon. And my assumption is Amazon will convert them if that person is interested in anything that Amazon may sell, <laughs> they will buy it. All right. So I, I trust Amazon and I think Duke, you probably do too. So my primary objective was to introduce curiosity. And I'll give you a couple examples of that. So I want to introduce curiosity so that someone is like, Hey, I want to, I want to close my curiosity gap though. They would never think it. They would just think, Hey, I want to know like the answer to this little question I have in my head. So I'll give you um, two examples. So one pretty easy is around um, like pricing. All right. Check the latest price on Amazon. Again, if you're not pulling the price from the API, you may have, you may not have the price listed. Um, so if you just say, Hey, check the latest price. Well, that's, a gap that people would want to fill if they're interested in that product they're like oh i do wonder how much it costs let me go to amazon and see so that's an easy one here's a little deeper one so remember the tables i was talking about and some people have um you know they'll have the name of the product they'll have an image they'll have a couple pieces of information and maybe like a button there's a lot of affiliate links and all that too so they have a lot of affiliate links there and i was like well you need to cut those affiliate links down maybe get rid of the button and you know the image with the affiliate link i was like try this all right so stay with me on this curiosity gap so take the image out and you may be thinking hey you know, i want to show people what the product looks like well what if you didn't show them what the product looks like and if it, instead you put the name of the product and in parentheses um you have like uh see image on amazon right if someone's curious like hey what does this thing look like they'll they'll think i just click the button it's on amazon right uh, i trust amazon so i'll click the not the button but they'll click the link which is an affiliate link on that text and then they go over to amazon they see the image awesome right that works great because there's a curiosity gap so that's my primary goal duke what do you think do you like that all right and then tom says do i create youtube videos to bring traffic to your niche site I don't, but I think that's a great idea. And I believe that if you, um, if you are targeting like low competition keywords, there's a strong chance that you may be able to get traffic, um, to your video just in the YouTube ecosystem or through organic Google search, your video may come up. So I would say that's a good approach, especially if you have you know, low competition keywords, keyword golden ratio keywords. I think that's a great approach to try. I don't do it personally, but I think that's good. All right. And then let me, and I'm catching up because I know there are some questions which were asked that were not marked as questions and that's okay. Um, uh, Hex says, I don't understand where to get reviews. So you get two main choices. So one, you write it yourself or two, you have someone write it for you. If you have someone write it for you, then you can hire just about anybody. I usually go to Upwork. If you need more information about reviews, Hex, I recommend you go to my YouTube channel and there are a few good videos on how to write content, how to outline content. And then if you want to hire people, how to hire them. 
Um, additionally, if you go to niche site project, um, actually that link that I put in here earlier, Hex, um, that's like a multi uh, part sort of tutorial. And there's a part on how to write content for Amazon affiliate sites. So take a look at that and that'll give you a much better understanding. And actually I recommend go to the blog. I think um, depending on how you learn, but I think the blog um, is a little more concise. All right. And Andrea says, if you have never used WordPress, does the course give you a technical walkthrough on how to create a site? No. So that is something that is sort of beyond the scope. However, if you need help, and maybe maybe I should do this, um, basically there's enough content on YouTube where you could like look up, you know, how to deal with WordPress in certain areas, and then you'd be able to um, figure it out on your own. But the course is really a marketing course. Um, and I don't cover the technical aspects of WordPress. There's a couple tweaks for a couple tools that I talk about as it relates, to, you know, from a marketing perspective. And, and I go over that sort of thing, but not a technical walkthrough. Um, but Andrea, I may like, I, if that is the limitation holding you back, um, maybe that is something I could do where I could like find like good WordPress tutorials that are, you know, concise and straightforward on like how to do, you know, X or Y. But in general, if you haven't used WordPress before, um, it's really, it's very straightforward. A lot, I mean, there are areas where it gets complex, but in general, it's like using a word processor. So it's pretty, and if you set up a website before, I think you're probably in good shape. Um, but there's a lot of common things that you'd end up doing. And Steven says, when you Google five figure niche site, I also have a video three pack with Google. Awesome. That's pretty cool. I mean, I think, uh, I don't know how many people actually search for that, but I know people try and search for the free download. All right. And Duke says, okay, good. I was wondering if I needed to develop a new skill of like copywriting that you didn't want to learn. Yeah. I don't think you need to. Uh, Lance mentioned, yeah, you end up getting other sales. Someone bought one of those water filters Amazon was pushing on Prime Day, almost up to $10 in commissions for the week. Awesome, Lance. That's great. Lance says, I'll have to try that method, Doug. Currently, you're doing image description and buy now type format on some new posts. Excellent. Yeah, great work. Lance, Lance is a student pushing through. Um, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint, all that stuff. So good job, Lance. Good to hear you're getting some traction and all that. So any other questions out there? Any other questions? All right. I'm trying to think if there were other little things that I should uh, be talking about. But yeah, do check out the course. Like I mentioned, um, bonus for webinar folks is I'll review your site. I'll review and audit your site when you get your first, you know, 10 posts out there ready to launch. I'll have a look. I'll look at every post to make sure it's good to go. Give you feedback, punch list, like I said, to make sure you um, can get through it. Um, Hex says, is my course video only? Actually, it's a blend. Um, it's video plus uh, some written content and most of it is sort of like worksheets. So if you are there, ha there have been a number of, uh, like non-native English speakers. I think you said you're from Russia. I'm not, I can't remember exactly in the chat, but usually, um, the worksheets are very close. They're not exact transcripts, but they're very close to it. So you can read the content and, you know, follow along with some of the over the shoulder demos. So some of the over the shoulder demos, there's no transcript for it. It's just me working over a specific, um, you know, tool, or maybe I'm looking at the competition analysis worksheet and I'm showing you how to fill it out. In that case, there's no like transcript specifically, but um, in general, most of the content is written out. So hopefully that helps answer the question. All right.
cool, cool. Well, thanks everybody for hopping on. I may be doing, I've been doing a lot of live streams this week, sort of in support of launching the course, but also I'm sort of, this is like behind the scenes. I know a lot of people do go to a lot of the live streams on YouTube, but um, on the YouTube side, you probably notice I've been releasing playlists. An interesting thing happens when you release a playlist. A lot of people watch the videos in the playlists because they all go together, number one. And then uh, number two, if people are watching those three videos, for example, three or four videos, over like that's sort of a trend, Google will suggest those videos to other people who maybe just stumbled across them. So that's one thing. The other part is as um, YouTube sees that you're watching videos from a specific person, they'll recommend more videos from that person, usually sort of uh, following that trend. Again, if someone's watching those videos, um, like all three or four of those videos, and then they see like, oh, it, when we recommend the videos to other people, they watch them too. So there's a nice like uh, relationship where if I publish, say, four interviews for Five Figure Niche Site, people watch more of the content all that week. So, you know, you'll go along with a certain number of views and then you'll get these spikes when you release more videos. Turns out if you release four videos on one day, you'll get an even bigger spike and it'll sort of not degrade as much. So I've been playing around with that. If people are interested why I'm doing like these playlists versus like releasing one video per day, I'm just trying something different. I haven't seen anyone talk about this, but it's interesting data and I'm not sure if it's, you know, making more people subscribe, making more people watch in general, but there's something to, there's something to it. And then additionally, if I just do a live stream, some people, you know, you tune in for everything, which is awesome. But if I do a live stream and I'm like, Hey, did you miss that video from the other day? Um, and it'll actually, I can like direct people over, which is not really the, um, I don't think many people are doing that, but I don't have other social channels and YouTube seems to be, you know, I'm treating it as a social channel. So I'm giving many updates. For example, before this, um, webinar, I just went on for like one minute and said, Hey, I'm doing a webinar on this topic. Just testing things out. So anyway, I'm rambling on, but I know some people are interesting interested in that stuff. Heck says, how many sites do you have now? I have a few sites. I usually don't share, you know, some people are asking like, yeah, do you put your name on them and stuff? I usually don't share too much. Um, you know, part of it is just my own privacy, just in general. The other part is I, I could be wrong, but I think that it, at some point, stories aren't as relatable. All right. So my headline of like, Hey, I sold a site for $235,000 is interesting. It's a cool headline. However, it's not very relatable. I don't think because if you're just getting started, it sounds like some crazy thing. Um, and it's interesting to a point. Um, and, and actually to go back when I got started, it was really interesting to see Pat Flynn's from smart passive income, his income reports, but it's completely unrelatable. Someone making, you know, $50,000 a month, um, for the last several years or so. And then now his income reports are like ridiculous where he's making, you know, hundreds of thousand dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars profit per month. Right. So anyway, I, I share bits and pieces. And at this point, I'm more interested in sharing like students' uh, stories. Like I mentioned, I published those earlier this week. I think those are way more relatable um, just in general versus, you know, someone trying to go from, uh, you know, six to seven figures or something like that. It's just a, a little bit less interesting. It's a different group of people. So anyway, hopefully that's helpful. So I have a few sites, not that many. All right, cool. I think that's all the questions. So We'll catch you later. Thanks for joining me today. Everyone have a great day. We'll talk soon. Thanks.